what, I mean, when you're talking about just winning a match poorly, does that just come down to like your effort at the end, squeaking out a win, or should go more into like what does that mean? So, because. I guess the way I think about it is like, yeah, there are times to squeak wins out. Like, you're going to have to weasel it out. I kind of weaseled some matches out at Pan Ams. But the way I think about it is there's a certain way that I want to wrestle. The best way I can describe it is it's, like, painful for me to look back at it. Mm. Like, that Sasso match, I hate watching the third period because all I do is stand there. I shoot. I know he can't score, so I just sit there on his leg. And I kind of I pull back door, and I'm almost scoring. But it's like I'm just wrestling through the position to do it. Like... The way that I, I, I would like to be is it's like 100% focused, dialed in, you know, everything. And, and for a while, that was kind of an issue that I had was I had, you know, skills and, and I was kind of like just tough, toughing matches out okay. late, but I wasn't super strong, wasn't in great shape. Like I, I didn't really, I looked kind of chubby at 149 <laughs> my junior year. So we, you know, I'm like, all right, I got to make a change because I can't keep just like squealing these matches out. Sure. And I guess kind of what you're saying is it's like there's nothing worse in my head than like yes I want to be better than the guy but I also want to I want to be proud of what I just did and it's like you do so much time you put so much time in at, even like at the NCAA tournament all right, it's five matches it's not really that much to display all that you've done and it's like I wasted one of them being gutless in the third period like that's so frustrating mm. it's like one fifteenth of the NCAA tournament horrible sure and it's like yes i did win but i really try not to be results oriented because that's how you get trapped into just like you get stagnant that way i feel like okay in my opinion just saying that not being result driven and coming from like the results you have four state titles four national titles how how is that how could that be so like the joke not the joke Kind of the way of my dad. My dad was really big on philosophy. Like okay. the way my parents were, my mom was like my day-to-day -day parent. Like she talked to me about school and taught me how to like cook breakfast in the morning, those kind of things. Sure. And my dad had these big picture, really philosophical things that like resonated a lot with me. Kind of influenced like how I think about things more, mm. you know? So he's talking to me and he was like, you need to be greedy, but you need to, it's a, there's a fine line between being greedy and, and kind of appreciative where it's like, this is really cool. What, what I'm doing is something that's really important to me and I care about it a lot. But it's like the, you know, leading up to it, it's like I'm doing everything I can for state title, national title, world title, whatever it is. And then the moment I get it, who cares about it anymore? And like keep chugging along. Mm. Because, and you know, it's one of those things when I'm done, I'll be able to look back and be like, that was really cool. This was cool, you know, whatever. Right. But in the moment, <clears throat> you just kind of do it and give yourself the day and move on. Like I remember the first time I think my dad ever really was like, that was good. <laughs> I won the Cadet Worlds my first time. My I was like a sophomore or junior in high school. And like we, we used to like go to tournaments and just not pick up the trophy and leave after my last match. We were like wow. those people. Jeez. Just and <laughs> that's so cool. And my dad was like, "Let let me see that medal." And he was like, "Oh." I was I was like, "No, you want it?" He's like, we're, "After today, we're not talking about it." But I gotta see it. Well, so so this is completely different from like the, I guess the Jerome Burrow story when he said that his dad would bring him around the medals and like all the trophies. That saying, "If you get it, like you win this." But that was completely opposite for you. And it, yeah. they still both have like that success. That's interesting. Well, he's obviously much better. <laughs> but um, my dad's thing, I guess, was it was like, you want to be good at wrestling. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was, it was, and I think it was just kind of how my brain worked. Because the big thing that my dad talks about with me, and like, especially with kids, like if I want to start coaching or if I have kids and I want to get them to like wrestling, mm -hmm. is he's like, you got to figure out what they like about wrestling and really hammer that. So like if, for Jordan, Mm -hmm. I'm sure his dad realized at some point, like, this dude likes winning trophies. So let's be like, hey, you can win trophies if you do this. And that's how you get your kid in. And with me, like, I hated, I hated losing. I hated losing. But more than that, I think I hated not being good at stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, if I did something, I wanted to be really good at it. So, and, like, my dad's kind of big, my dad is really big picture approach. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, when I was eight, was like, all right, well, if I want to get this kid to win 
NCAA title or a world title, like, I don't really care about how good he is when he's eight, but he needs to build the skills now. So he really hammered with me, like, being skilled, it's a skill sport, learn your skills, like, get really focused on the technical aspect. So when I won tournaments, it was just like, oh, good, like, my moves work today. Mm. More than it was like, oh, I won. Like, my dad used to tell me this story about Buvaisar Satyev. And I don't remember the tournament, but he lost. It might have been Russian. It was a big tournament. It was like Russian Nationals or Uregan, something with implications. Mm -hmm. And he like comes off the mat. It's just kind of, it was like tough, tough match. He lost. And instantly, like he's not, he hasn't even pulled his singlet straps down. He's like in the corner of the mat working on whatever just happened. You know, let's say he got shrugged. They're working on like, hey, you probably should have done this. Right on the mat. Mm. And my dad was like, that's how you want it. That's how you need to be. Where it's like, he like not like he didn't care that he lost, but he was more concerned with like what actually went wrong than the fact that he lost. Okay. And I think that that's a good approach to have because then it's like, I need to be good. I need to be good at the sport, and we'll see where that gets me. Mm -hmm. Kind of how I try to think about it. Yes, yeah, that was a long-winded answer. Yeah. So you're literally the definition of like staying on top. Like I mean, think about it. Eight straight years of. State championships and national titles, maybe a little more with the Couple Olympic Reds. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, do you think it's harder to stay on top or just get to the top? So, I I mean, it's convenient for me to say stay on top, but there's difficulties to both sides. But I think about like Vito's dad, Vogar Arujo, this two-time world champ, and I agree with this. He, his, he used to make the joke, like anybody can win anything once, but if you win it twice, then you deserve to win it. And I, I think kind of what it is is it's, it's hard to get to the top because, you know, let's say the best guy in the weight class is here and you're here. You have to make up this much ground. But when you're this guy, it's like whatever. You do your thing and, we're, and people, you're the surprising guy. But when you're this guy, like people revolve their styles around you. So I think it's... Hard, obviously, it's harder to get good or everybody would be the best guy, right? Sure. But there's something about consistently winning where it's like everybody's trying to figure out what you're doing or trying to beat it, and they either can't or you're adapting faster. Mm. And so it's 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 kind of how you look at it. It's like right? comparing apples to oranges. It's, it's, little, completely, yeah. it's almost completely different. Yeah, because, I never thought about that. You know, way. if you're – like my freshman year, I had all my scrambling, my arm drag, single leg, and it was working on everybody because nobody, for the first half of the year, even really cared. I was just a freshman. I was just this kid who's good. Let's see. And then everything worked. And then, like, my sophomore year, couldn't drag anybody. Yeah. Every time I shot, they were, like, going right to stuff. And, like, by the time my senior year, it's like everybody is no. Everyone wrestled me mm -hmm. exactly the same way <laughs> every single match, basically. Oh. So it's like they're working their styles around me, right? <clears throat> and it's like, what do, you want, what do you want them to do? Not have a game plan going into the match. But because of that, it forces me to either get so good at what I'm doing that you just can't stop it, or constantly adapt so that when you're shutting down what I did, it's what I did, and it's, I have something different now. So Yeah. Well, when, I, when I think of that, it's like when RBY put his arm behind his back when he had wrestled with DeSanto. Yeah, he would never do that in a match. Yeah. He knows. So like, what would people do that you would notice to you, like, exactly? Like, everybody, so I've got, I don't even know what kind of shot, I call it a knee pull, but I kind of just, like, dive in there mm -hmm. at your legs, and I have a good little feel for, like, the in and out, up and down motion, I get you to lean and shoot. So, like, all season, no one really pressured me at all, and if you look at a lot of matches, guys keep their hands on the mat and kind of just, like, shuffle around, and mm -hmm. they're keeping distance in a way where I can't shoot, and then if I do get into contact, they're just kind of clamping on. Yeah. And um, especially because of like the edge, if I get to your leg, you can kind of sit on the edge and play the game mm -hmm. or take some half shots and clear out of them, right? And it, I don't want it to be like I'm saying that these guys just are stalling the whole match because it's not like that. But they're just, you know, they understand that I'm trying to shoot on them, so they're just going to be like hands down, down block, and let's try to find a score late or find a reattack. Yeah. And if you look at like the, the Van Ness match, he shot in the first 10 seconds, and we got in like that crazy scramble. And then after that, it was like, all right, down block, down block, down block, down block, down block. And then he reattacked me in the third. Mm. So, like, that's a good example of a guy who, and he's like a guy who pushes really hard, wrestles super hard, ton of pushing, and he kind of made an adjustment. I, I mean, what do you want? It's national yeah. semifinals. Yeah. Going to make adjustments, right? Yeah. And that was kind of what he did. 
do you like when we were talking about like watching film do you watch film on these guys and is that a big adjustment you have to make when it's like oh wait he's not doing what i was training for so i used to be a big film guy <clears throat> and now it's like at the senior level they don't do that at the senior level they wrestle and not like these guys don't they wrestle what they're trying to do and if you See, it's just kind of like, all right, here's my thing that I'm really good at versus your thing that you're really good at. Oh, okay. So for me, it's important to know. Because if I wrestle like the Iranian, like he's going to put his hands real low like this and then jump into under overs. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what he's going to do, no matter what. So it's like, I got to be ready for that. But the college guys, they're way more... Worried about it? Adaptable. Like, if I watch a match of, you know, pick a guy. Shit, we'll talk about Shane again. Sure. You know, he's going to wrestle, but especially those Penn State guys do a good job of, like, match to match, changing what their game plan is for the guy. And then they get their guys to stick to it really well. Mm. So I feel like at the college level, it's like, yeah, I can watch film and see, you know, hey, this guy's going to hit this shot. But the main thing that I know is, like, well, let's figure out how to crack him open and get some offense going. Okay. Well, it's like... So you come in freshman year, and then sophomore year, everybody makes adjustments. It's so like you when you wrestle at the senior level, I think 2019 is when you... That's a perfect example yeah. of like all of a sudden everything worked again. Yeah. Mm. And I'm like oh, blowing it up. But it was just because they, they... Nobody's seen it. No one expected. And it was like, I just barely won the national tournament. Well, this guy's not going to beat these guys. Yeah. So it kind of had yeah. that shock factor. That's a good, good example. Yeah. Of Thanks so much for watching this clip. If you want to watch the full podcast, click right here. Click it.